is done and now we can relax. We're looking today at the 31st Psalm and I want to begin just by asking a question which is normally what I do, right? When life begins to tumble in on you, when, when things just seem to be out of your control, when maybe um, the attacks are coming from several different places, where do you go? Is there a place that you, that you go to that you find peace, that you find uh, options maybe, that you, you feel protected? Let's that's where we are today in the 31st Psalm, and that's not new for us in the Psalms, is it? You know, most cities, even smaller cities, have a warning system of trouble that's coming in the form of severe weather. And when those sirens go off, usually about that time, the the weather service comes on the radio or your television to say, okay, here's what's happening. And it will not only say you need to take cover, but it will describe the cover you need to take and the kind of cover that won't help you any. And so they'll say things like go into an inner room where there's no windows or go underground. And many people do have a storm shelter that is underground and that's where they go when they get the warning because they're going to be somewhat protected from the violence that's coming although it is coming now you you see you see the difference there the storm warning and and all of that doesn't make the storm go away it it tells us that there's a place you can go for refuge and for safety. Well, David's going to mention that in this psalm several times, the refuge that he can go to in the Lord 
in the middle of all his afflictions. And that's that's kind of where I want to want to talk uh, this morning as we go through this 31st Psalm. You know, when, uh, when a pilot is flying and flies into a, a big cloud bank where he no longer sees the ground uh, below him, then he he can depend on his training with his instruments to keep going the direction he needs to go. And so in a sense, those instruments are his refuge, but they have been there all the time. I, I think that's something we, we need to kind of grab onto as we think about the 31st Psalm. So let's take a look at that. The 31st Psalm, and as usual, we'll, we'll look at the 31st Psalm from a pretty high vantage point at first. And what we see in, in the way I've divided it is there's really two divisions. And the first, the first division is, is going to go really through verse 18, and we can call that David's Lament. Now the first verse there, the first couple of verses are really more confirmation than that, but that's the essence of these, of these first 18 verses. And then the rest of the psalm is a thanksgiving to God, or it bounces off being thankful to God and, and, and pointing out all the aspects of God that can be depended on uh, when, our, when our times are in trouble. So that's, uh, that's what this psalm is about. My superscription says this was for the choir master, a psalm of David. And <clears throat> so this may have been a psalm or song that the singers in the temple would sing. And it says at the dedication of the temple. So here we have a, a psalm that in the first couple of verses uh, portrays a positive, God's a refuge, finishes out that first section talking about all the problems that David is having, and then begins with, in spite of all of that, there in verse 19, a, a verse, you might say, of thanksgiving. So let's, um, let's read this together this morning. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for, they, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love, because you've seen my affliction and you have known the distress of my soul. And you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief and my soul and my body also. My, for my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors and the object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like the one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. 
but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant and save me in your steadfast love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go silently to Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak insolently against the righteous in pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight, but you heard the voice of my pleas when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all you saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord. A rather lengthy psalm, but I might I might point out with the positive, I guess, as we as we begin this morning. The negative, the lament of David, is not new to us. As he he describes the the problems he's facing in his life. And after he does, and even before he does, he speaks to where he finds refuge and safety. That doesn't necessarily mean all of these things go away, just like being in the tornado shelter doesn't make the tornado go away but it's a safe way to deal with them. And so that's what he does here. I would point out that there's about seven times in this psalm that David is going to point out in some way, okay, the, the refuge or the safety or the security that he has in God. Of course, it's, it's mentioned, and the word refuge is mentioned several times just by itself, but we, we notice here in the, uh, just in the first two verses that refuge is mentioned, and then it's going to be mentioned again in verse 4 and, and on later in, uh, in this psalm. And we have seen this before, that David finds refuge in, in God. In addition to that, he'll, he'll talk about being in God's hand. As a matter of fact, when he uses that terminology, in God's hand, he contrasts being in the hand of God, this is verse 15, being in the hand of God with being in the hand of his enemies. Because the hand of his enemies are going to bring destruction, if not death, if that's where David finds himself. But in the hand of God, that's what he says, my times are in your hand. And he says, I trust you, O Lord. I trust you, O Lord. You are my God. You know, when, when times seem to get tough and things maybe seem out of our control, maybe there is a temptation there. Maybe there's, there's a small voice there that we call Satan who says you know what God God doesn't care about you God is not even there if he were all of this stuff wouldn't be happening and of course that's not true that's the lie of the devil the truth of problems in life is, is spoken about by Jesus himself when he said in this world, you will have trouble. Some versions say tribulation, but be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. And so the things that in life that seem to be overcoming us, our Savior has overcome and leads us through this journey in life as long as we're walking with him. So David finds refuge in God. He finds safety and security in the hand of God. He'll say, he'll say later, using a different, uh, different words, Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a, be a besieged city. He, uh, so he uses that, that wonderful word, hezed, that steadfast love or that loving kindness or that mercy, whatever your version may say, telling us and reminding himself that this love is with us all the time. He'll go on to say in that same page, uh, verse 22, I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight. And so it, exactly what we talked about is what, what David is experiencing here. And that is that Things got so bad that maybe just for a moment, maybe for several moments, maybe for some time, David was led to at least say, if not believe, that he had been cut off from God. And maybe sometimes you and I feel the same way. And that we listen to all the naysayers out there who would tell us that, well, if there really was a God, and if you really had a God in your life, these things wouldn't be happening to you, which may lead us for a moment or maybe several moments, or for a while, to just think, well, we are cut off from God. We are no longer in God's sight. We know that's not the case, and David does too. Although he, he may admit that he's had those feelings, he always come back, he comes back around to the truth that God is with him. And God may not have taken the storms in David's life away. Remember that he, he mentioned some of them are here with him because of his iniquity. That's verse 10. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. So David recognizes his sin, and he recognizes, though forgiven of those sins, there are ramifications of those sins, such as his sin with Bathsheba and committing adultery and Uriah, her husband, having him killed. And Nathan the prophet told David, well, you're not going to die, which is what should have happened according to the law, but there were other ramifications of his sin. And you remember David on the run from King Saul. And, and Saul and, and his band continued to, to come after David. And so you see the things that happened in David's life, but yet he will say, in you, I can take refuge. And so we, we if, if I can use the metaphor of the storm, we crawl into the safety of God in his presence, knowing that his has said his love has never failed for us. And now he walks with us as things from outside assail us, attack us, try to defeat us. In all of that, if we can, if we can do and say what David doesn't say here, it would strengthen and bolster our faith in God as well as our relationship with him. After mentioning in this lament all the things, all the things that, that are afflicting him, he will say in verse 14, But I trust in you, O Lord. I say to you, you are my God. My times, my times, are in your hand. In other words, my life's in your hands, whether it's good times, bad times, all times. Those are in your hand. And then he will once again request from God, make your face shine on your servant. 
and he's going to thank God. That's what we need to do. You know, this, this psalm has some words that are, that are uttered by both Jesus as well as that martyr for Christ, Stephen. Jesus says it in, in Luke 23, and Stephen says it in Acts 7. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus says this just before he dies. Stephen says it just before he dies. Both say it in a moment of distress in their lives brought upon them from the outside. And David says it here. Maybe that ought to be that ought to be something we say at the end of a prayer when we're beseeching God to be present in our problems, in our severe problems in our life. That prayer ought to end not so much with, in Jesus' name, amen, but into your hands I commit my spirit. Acknowledging, acknowledging that he is God and that he knows the end from the beginning. He is supreme, and his, his Z stays with us continually. How about that for a prayer? Well, we'll be in the 32nd Psalm. We're closing in on the end of book one in the Psalms, and uh, we may take a pause there and do something else, and then we'll come back to them. Hope you have a wonderful day. If you're um, a member of the Parkview Church of Christ, then we will see you tonight at 6 o'clock for our Wednesday meal and at 7 o'clock for our Bible classes. May the peace of God be with you today.